Welcome back, everybody, to the Behind the Ears podcast. I am your host, Mr. Kress. Danny is out on special assignment tonight, and so I am going to host a special solo version of our podcast. Uh, right now, we are streaming live on Facebook, as we do for most of our recordings, and so I will be more than happy to answer any questions, comments, uh, any interaction from anybody out there in the listening audience. Uh, today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, you know, it is one of the first really cold days here in uh, around the Chicago area. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that are uh, experiencing some issues with their cars for the first time in the season, because obviously the cold weather uh, really messes up with uh, people's vehicles. And uh, as I've probably mentioned before on the podcast, I am a gearhead. That's right, a Disney fan and a person that likes to wrench on his cars. Uh, and the interesting part to it for me is that I am very much so uh, the kind of person that um, uh, I find it therapeutic. And I really enjoy you know, doing that sort of thing. And I realize it's not everybody's bag. But uh, I've learned a lot of really cool things over the past few years in uh, not only just dealing with my own vehicles, but also getting those re vehicles ready for a Disney trip. Now, just for a comparison, I know that there's a lot of people out there that try to weigh the decision. Um, I try, they try to weigh the decision on whether or not they should drive or whether or not they should fly. And this is a really good discussion to have because obviously it takes a lot more time to drive, but in most cases, it's a heck of a lot cheaper. Uh, generally speaking, from where I live, it's about $400 a ticket. Fly down from here to the, uh, you know, to the Orlando International Airport. $400. Now that's expensive and that's for, and to mind you, there's usually, you know, either three or four of us doing this type of thing. So it's really, really crazy insane. That's like, you know, anywhere up to, you know, 12 to $1,600. I mean, there are some people that don't pay 12 or $1,600 for their lodging for the entire, for an entire week in Walt Disney world. But I also know that driving can take some time for us. We've tried to do the drive straight through. And it's one of those cases where, um, well, how can I put it this way? Doing the drive straight through requires a lot of endurance. Now we've tried to do it like, you know, we would leave, let's see, what was the one time we left, uh, you know, we left at like two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And being that the drive, if you don't make any stops, from where I'm at to Disney, is it anywhere between 17 and 18 hours, depending on which, uh, which, you know, map system you look at, you know, we're thinking, Oh, it'll probably take, sorry about that. It would probably take anywhere between, um, you know, 20 to 22 hours to, you know, stops, eat food, this and the other. And so the, you know, the trip started the first time we did that and I drove for a big period of time. And then I thought I was okay driving through the night. I, you know, my wife went to go fall asleep for a while. I'm like starting to fall asleep myself. I'm like, Oh, this is not good. I took a five hour energy, five hour, en five hour energy lasted 15 minutes for me. I was like, yeah, this is great. Do, 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 like nudging my wife, <laughs> honey, I need you to drive. And we still made, you know, we made it, we made it in good time, but we were exhausted by the time we got down there. Fortunately, we were only going to stay at an offsite hotel for that first night. It wasn't going to be a big deal, but then we had to drift all the way home. Uh, again, 20, you know, about 24 hours straight and it was exhausting. Uh, you know, even to the point where one time we just pulled over at a rest area, it was hot, left the car running and just slept for about an hour or so if we can keep on going. So we actually decided we were going to split up the time 
you know, Atlanta is about 12 hours away or so. That's a good amount of driving in one day. And then, you know, keep on going from that point on uh, the next morning. And so we tend to stop now just because it's a little bit easier for us. Now I know people drive, you know, they, they split with drivers and so on and so forth. And we just haven't gotten an act. So for me, you know, we decided, Hey, we'll go ahead and split. And even with a hotel and some extra food and stuff like that, it's still cheaper for us to drive than fly. So take that into consideration, take into consideration your route, how long it's going to take you, how much you may have to pay for gas. Um, do you have the extra time? Sometimes it's just easier that, hey, you have some extra time, take the vacation time, enjoy the time with your family. Sometimes it's not always just the drive, it's, you know, a journey. You know, we've seen so many cool things, you know, driving instead of flying. Um, you know, to be able to see the mountains at sunrise is just amazing. Seeing the mountains at sunset is also amazing, I might add. Um, stopping at some roadside attractions, you know, roadside things uh, have turned out to be some of our favorite parts of our journey. Uh, stopping at mile marker one as you enter into Florida uh, to be able to, um, you know, get that fresh squeezed orange juice sample. Those are the kinds of things, um, you know, those are the kinds of things that we really look forward to. Um, you know, my, my wife and I, we would always, you know, look at the signs for what we're going to go and what we want to do. And um, it can be a lot of fun, but let's face it. You got to have a car that can do it. Now, believe it or not, I drive a truck that is 13 years old. It's got almost 140,000 miles on it. And it is my go-to vehicle for Disney trips. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, man, I just don't know if I can trust my vehicle. Yeah, that makes a difference. But let me let me just kind of let me kind of just explain some things. And the reason why I even brought this up now, especially as I started off the conversation here today, that you know things are um, you know cold here in Chicago. The fact of the matter is, is that now is the time to really get things worked on, get things checked in your vehicle, because cold is almost as bad as hot when it comes to stresses on your vehicle. And you're going to find some things on your vehicle now in the wintertime uh, that, you know, if you get them taken care of now because of the cold, chances are it's going to carry over into your win into your summer months or even your springtime or fall, whenever you're going to go this year. And it's only going to benefit you later. Now, the way I look at it is this. My travel budget for the year for Disney, I do keep it at about $1,500 a year. But that gives me, in most cases, about $1,000 a year to maintain my vehicle. Now, that sounds like a lot, but to be honest with you, it's not as much as you think because these are things that you should probably be doing to your vehicles anyway. Uh, for example, um, truck needed new tires this year. It finally became time, and I spent almost $800 on tires. $800 on tires, black round circles on the truck, $800. So there goes a big chunk of my budget, but that's okay because I only have a few other things I have to do with it before our next road trip. Um, things that I need, know I need to do are like, it's, let's see, it's been about f four to five years since I've done the coolant. It's time to flush that out, put it in. That's going to cost me maybe 30 bucks. Uh, oil changes. I do that all the time before in the spring, but you know, it's all, it takes me all the way through, uh, the summer. That's about another 20 bucks because I do it myself, all the materials myself. Um, things like, uh, let's see, I have to probably replace some of the belts. Hmm. That's about another 40 bucks. Again, I'm doing labor myself. I have a, I have a cleanable air filter. I'll clean that. I have all the materials for it. Doesn't cost me a dime. Um, but I know in order to really get the most out of my ride, it's finally time to replace shocks and struts. Believe it or not, that's only going to cost me about $300. And I don't have to do it again for another six years or thereabouts. And I'm going to do it myself, saving that labor. Um, there's some general cleanup on the vehicle I need to do. Eh, maybe it'll cost me about 50 bucks of materials. So... Overall, I'm still under budget uh, for for this next year, and I'm you know my my truck is going to maintain be maintained. It's top shape. It's not going to fail me. 
And if I notice anything, especially during the winter time, at least I'm going to have a little bit of time to plan for it. But let me go over some things that like I do before my trips. And these are actually some good things that you can find, um, you know, to just to do anytime, but more so, especially in wintertime, especially before you go on a road trip. First and foremost, and this is really important, especially with the differences in temperature, check your tire pressure. I know this seems really simple, right? But, you know, the interesting part is, is that for every 10 degrees in change of uh, air temperature, there is a possibility that your tire pressure can change by one PSI. Now, that doesn't seem like much, but if you've, you know, if you compare summer versus winter now, you know, it's about a 50 degree difference. Easy. That can mean, you know, five pounds worth of difference in your air and your tires. That's a pretty significant difference. And even if your tire pressure monitoring system in most newer cars today, you know, doesn't, the light doesn't go on, check your tire pressure. I bet you any money with the cold, it's going to drop. Uh, you know, and also before you leave on us in the summertime, check it again, make sure it's within the right range. Check your tire, tire condition. This is really important for winter because you need that good tread to deal with snow in the Midwest. Now I realize not all of our listeners are in the Midwest. Totally get it. But it's, you know, also one of those things where you have to check it so that it'll, you know, your tires will work well in the rain. Um, <laughs> that's a big thing around, you know, the South, around Florida in the summertime. It's, I, I, it just seems really weird because like every time we leave from Walt Disney World to go back home, it's usually in the middle of the day, and I kid you not, we run into the biggest storms every time. I'm not talking about just, oh, just constant rain. I'm talking rain that seems to be puddling on the highway a lot. Well, always got to make sure that your tires are in good shape. They have a good amount of tread. Wintertime for us, it's the snow. In the summertime, it's for rain. So that's something that's something to look forward to. You want to know how you check your depth, for your, uh, depth of your tires to make sure they're good? Well, there's a lot of times that people would say, hey, use a penny because in a, with a penny, you flip it over. And if you see the tip of George Washington's head in between the treads, it's time for new tires. However, I don't go by the penny test. I go by the quarter test. And the fact of the matter is you flip the quarter over. And if you can actually, you know, see the top, you know, top of the head, then it's time to replace. It's a little bit more. I mean, you, it allows for a little bit more tread before you actually have to, you know, you know, uh, actually replace it. But the fact of the matter is, is that if you, if you can finally get to that penny test and you finally need tires by then, chances are you've needed tires for a long time. Uh, it just works a lot more, a lot, a lot better for me. It's a safety thing. Um, check the spare tire. Now here's the deal. Not a lot of people check the spare in my truck. It's a bear to get that spare tire down uh, so I can check its condition, check its, you know, check its uh, pressure and just to make sure that it's in good shape, make sure there's no cuts, no, no, you know, bruising or make sure it's not bubbling or, or what have you. Now, keep in mind that tire in my truck is, you know, exposed to the elements. So I take it off and I clean it really good. I check its pressure. I check all around it to make sure it's not cracked. Um, you know, for most other people, you might have to find your spare. It might be under, you know, a back part for your trunk or maybe tucked away on the side of a minivan or, or what have you, whatever it is, wherever it is, take time to check it, check its condition, check its tire pressure as well. Um, one thing that I usually do, um, you know, my truck, it's in the little boot that I have back there, but also for like my car, uh, there was a little bit of space where the spare tire is it's, while it's kind of a last resort thing. I keep a big can of like a, you know, an, an sealant, like a fix a flat or something like that. Something that's an inflatable uh, sealant. I put that in there as well, just in case uh, it helps the situation out just in case you need it. Um, at the time, you know, Hey, is it time to rotate your tires? You know, maintenance is a, is a big thing. And, um, you know, just to make sure that your tires are wearing evenly, make sure you rotate them about every 7,500 miles front to back. Simple as that. Uh, a lot of times if you belong to some sort of a wholesale club, they'll do that for you for free if you buy the tires from them. Uh, sometimes it's just a very small charge to do, have it done if you, know, you haven't bought tires from them. It's well worth it. 
uh, especially, you know, I always ask them to rebalance everything to make sure that everything's nice and smooth. It's kind of a cool deal. You know, again, it's a maintenance thing. Doesn't cost a lot of money. Shop around, as I said, your local, uh, your local uh, warehouse uh, type of uh, retailer usually have some, some pretty good service in that area. Now, speaking of the rain, speaking of the snow, <clears throat> check your windshield wipers. Now, a lot of times you change them about every six months or so. Um, if, it is, you know, if you haven't done it in a while, maybe this is the time to go ahead and do that. Uh, what I also like to do is I like to take some like isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, something like that, put it on a rag, and I'll wipe it up and down the uh, blade several times, and I'll you know put more on a rag and, until it's virtually not you know nothing coming off. A lot of times you can actually get a little bit extra use out of your wiper blades that way. And again, it doesn't matter if it's now in the winter time or now in the summer. It's a good time to check it all out. Uh, one other thing I like to do is to take it a step further. A lot of times I'll clean my windshield. You know, I'll start off with, you know, good uh, spray um, foaming cleaner. I'll get it really, really super clean. And I like to use, you know, a water repellent. And I'm not, man, I'm not trying to name drop, but I use rain -Axe. And I'll be honest with you, that stuff works great. That stuff is worth it. Simple as that. You know, snow slides off of it. Rain flies off of it. It's great in the wintertime now. And it's great in the summertime later. I apply it, you know, once once before the winter, once before the summer, you know, trips type happen. It's well worth a few extra minutes. And a bottle from of that stuff will last you a number of cars. I think I'm still using the same bottle of stuff I've been using for about three years now. So it may cost you a few bucks, but it's well worth it. Use it on all your vehicles. Um, also, you know, check, you know, clean it really well. Use the rain -X. Um, you know, if you feel like you have to change those wipers, do it. If you don't know how to change your wipers, you know, most, um, most auto, uh, parts places will help you change your wipers for you and watch them. Cause I'm going to watch them carefully how they do it. I'm sure they'll show you how to do it. Only takes a couple minutes and then you can do it yourself. Um, under the hood, I like to just check for general issues under the hood. I check the belts, make sure I don't see any cracking, any chunks missing out of them, uh, any, you know, squeaking or what have you. But then I also check the belts. Now, here's the thing with the belts. Generally speaking, if your car is 10 years old or older, you should probably consider replacing the belts right? and, and the hoses for that matter. Because you may not necessarily see it. But, you know, belts, or um, I keep on saying belts, hoses keep, can actually go ahead and deteriorate from the inside out. And you may not see cracks or anything like that, but it may happen. And so it's good just to go ahead and replace them as a point of maintenance. Now, granted, the good part is that most of the rubber hoses that are being used today are really good quality. So chances are, you know, you're going to be fine for most cases, but it's never, you know, a bad idea to have a peace of mind to have them change them out. It's not hard to do on your own, but if anything, go find yourself a, a good reputable uh, shop that'll help you take care of that. It won't cost you that much and it'll help keep you from getting stranded on the side of the road. Um, I can also, also mention the belt. You know what? If your car is more than five years old, consider getting that belt replaced. It's again, it's cheap maintenance, you know, and I think that if you find a, a, a local shop that can do that for you, if you don't know how, um, again, not really hard to do. Do it in an oil change even. It's it's not that big big of a deal. But I want to throw out something. We're, we're speaking about belts. You know, a lot of cars these days, they have a timing belt. Now, it's not something that you can see. It's kind of usually covered, and it's not really accessible to most, uh, you know, most mecha uh, home mechanics, I should say, such as myself. But it's a really super critical piece. Now, check your owner's manual and see if your um, maintenance schedule actually shows you when you need to replace that belt. Now, I'm going to warn you, it's expensive to get that belt replaced. Generally speaking, on most cars, you're talking about six or $700 because it's all labor. And usually they'll replace like the water pump and they'll check the seals if they're leaking or whatever, because all that has to be ripped apart anyway, just to get it taken care of. But here's the deal. If you have more than 80 to 100,000 miles on a car and you don't know that it's been changed lately, especially if you bought it used, 
fact of the matter is at 100,000 miles, you need to change it because if that belt snaps or any of the teeth break or whatever, there's a very good chance you're going to destroy your engine. Not just make it die. Maybe not necessarily let you strand it. It's going to kill it. It's going to destroy it. It will self-destruct. And that's uh, unfortunate, but it is true. So get it changed. Again, it's a maintenance thing. It's something you have to do anyway. You might as well do it before your Disney trip. And, you know, make that as part of your maintenance bit. You know, check your air filter. You know, if you haven't replaced it, if you got a paper filter, I used to just replace my paper filters every once a year in the springtime. And now's the time, a good time to check it anyway. Uh, I check it in the springtime, especially because uh, I have found more than my share of like winter debris, you know, little pieces of rock, gravel, uh, salts and everything else, you know, where the filter stopped it kind of in there. And I have to clean it all out anyway. Those things are cheap, you know, and it also helps your, you know, helps protect your engine, keeps it breathe better. Again, maintenance item. Check your battery. And most of them are sealed. You really can't do anything really check it. But again, take it to like, you know, a, a major parts retailer. They'll tell you, you know, whether or not it needs to be replaced and what its general condition is. Again, most places uh, such as your, um, you know, your uh, warehouse clubs and stuff like that, they'll be able to check it for you and they'll tell you if it needs to be replaced. And a great example, um, just the other month, I went to change the oil in my mother-in-law's car. And, you know, everything started fine, but I just kind of had this feeling that her car is also about 12 years old, still had the original battery. I was pretty impressed by that. But I said, why don't you take it over to, you know, the wholesale place, have them test it and see what happens. Sure enough, it was on its way out. I guarantee you that if she didn't buy that new battery then and there, a day like today where it got down to about 19 degrees, she would have been dead on the side of the road or at least in the parking lot, I should say. So sometimes you just go ahead. A lot of times places will check it for absolutely nothing. And it gives you a little bit of peace of mind. But now's also the time. Hey, check some of those turn signals, lights, other indicators, license plate lights. You know, the only time I've ever gotten pulled over in the past 10 years was because my license plate light was out. So check all those lights, you know, give it all, you know, give it all a good look over. Um, but going back on the inside, do you got any warning lights on your dash? You know, think about it. Are there, is there things that you're just kind of ignoring, you know, like your check engine light, you know, a lot of people call that the money light because anytime that light comes on, it's going to cost you money. Well, you know, just remember this. Anytime a light comes on, it's for a reason. And you kind of want to get some of those things checked out. Um, it's one of those cases where, uh, you know, a lot of times you can go to a parts store, they'll, they'll put in a computer, they'll plug a computer in, they'll go ahead and scan it free. They'll tell you some things that are going on. Uh, keep in mind, it's for diagnostic purposes. It doesn't mean that you need to buy a certain part. It could mean that something else is going on. Get that checked. I mean, if nothing else, you're going to probably have to get it checked. If, you're, if your state or county does emissions testing and everything, you might as well get that taken care of. It'll just help your engine run better and make sure everything's running at peak, you know, peak efficiency. Um, and then one other thing I like to do, I like to take my car out for a nice long drive, about a month, month and a half before my road trips. And I also do this in the wintertime as well to kind of just keep it going as best as possible. You know, I, I feel for rattles and vibrations because, you know, that can mean that you got something worn in the suspension. And if it feels weird, just go ahead and get it checked out. Um, listen for squeals or rumbles. You know, it can be an issue of some brake issues or maybe even a tire going bad. Um, and this is going to sound weird. Sniff. Sniff for weird smells. You know, things like, you know, leaking fluids or, you know, funky exhaust or anything like that. Sometimes your nose knows, as they say, you know, if you smell things, especially like fuel leaking, oil burning, um, get those things checked out. And the last thing you want to do is to ignore those simple signs that could possibly mean that you're going to get broken down on the side of the road. That's just not where you want to be. Um, so these are just some of my first tips. Now, as I said, you can go ahead and do this now, you know, in the winter time, because it's a good time to always check things. And if you think about it, you're about six months out to your summer vacation, give or take. 
And now would be a good time to realize, hey, you got to maybe save up a few bucks, put it into your Disney budget and, um, you know, get those things taken care of. Do it yourself. Have it checked out by a shop, uh, whatever you need. And of course, if your car is under warranty and you find out there might be some issues, hey, good time for the dealer to make a few bucks off a few bucks off of uh, their own company. So they um, with warranty work, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, I'm hoping that uh, you you kind of take that in consideration. Um, <clears throat> as I said, it's it is one of those items where. Um, you know, it seems like it toss, costs a lot of money to keep your car going. But to be honest, you know, people are keeping their cars longer these days and they're relying on them for more and more things. You might as well spend some time really maintaining them well, keeping it for long as you can. And you're going to save money in the long run because after all, the you know, the cheapest car you're ever going to own is the one you already have and it's paid for and you're taken care of. You know, I may spend a thousand dollars a year dealing with my truck. Fact of the matter is, if I was to replace my truck, it'd probably cost me five hundred dollars a month. So there's that going for me. All right. Well, anyway, thank you uh, for joining us. I uh, I'm going to see if there's any questions that are from our audience or anything like that. I don't necessarily think so, but um, I'm really glad that I got a chance to talk to you solo tonight. And I just want to go ahead and remind everybody: feel free to catch us up on over at Instagram and on Twitter and our Facebook page. And don't forget to share our Facebook page. And coming up soon, we're also going to um, uh, also uh, announce um, announce kind of a contest, a giveaway. Oh, yeah, a Christmas giveaway. <laughs> so when, when are we going to announce that? Ah, you'll have to listen to our podcast. So anyway, tune in next time. And also don't forget, that if you have any questions, comments, ideas for the show, or maybe you want, do you want to be a part of the show? Drop us a line behind the ears podcast at gmail.com. I'm Mr. Chris, and I brought to you this uh, nice little solo episode and thank you for joining. And I hope y'all have a magical day. Take care. <laughs>